All right, guys, welcome back to Precision Machine Shed. I got the clop shaper again. So since our last video here, I've done a little bit of research. I've tried to do the best I can trying to figure this guy out. I uh, haven't gotten a lot of help. <laughs> gotten a few uh, comments and uh, suggestions, opinions, I guess. And a few of them have been mainly towards, you know, is this thing three phase? So what I did is I pulled the back cover off here and I'll show you a picture of that. And what I think is happening, and there's actually a, a page in there with the wiring diagram. So what I actually think is going on is this may actually be a three phase machine. Uh, there is, this motor is currently wired for 220 volt. It doesn't say single phase or three phase though. That's my, my issue, but there are nine posts on each side of this guy so there's 18 posts on this motor and i am not a motor expert but i have never seen a 220 volt single phase motor with more than like six or seven or eight maybe leads on it so i'm thinking this is a three phase motor and this 14 30 plug-in they have on here i think somebody either use this plug-in as a three-phase plug or they wired this thing on there once upon a time thinking it was single phase and hoping it would work and it didn't work and they just gave up on it um, but the other clue to why I think this might be three phases the the two voltage leads in here so there's a, a black, a red, and a white, of course, neutral with that four prong plug and then the, the ground wire. I believe what is going on here, and this is a three phase, I mean, it can be a three phase um, setup. And it's, I originally thought this was wired for 220 single phase, but after thinking about it, the black and the red wire are on line one and two, and then the white wire is on line three. So I would have thought if it, if they would have tried to have wired this originally for a 220 volt single phase, the line one, line two is actually L1 and L3. So the neutral and the red or the neutral and the black actually would have been switched around. Actually the neutral and the red. So the, the white would have been in the middle and then the red and the black on each side. But it's black, red, and white. And then out the bottom we got three leads. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to try and pull this cover off here, which is a junction box. And I already pulled, pulled off the switch on the other side, but we'll take a look at that here in a second. But we'll t open this guy up and see what's in there. All right, here it is. Let's see. Oh, watch it. Nothing on the inside cover, of course. So this looks like a starter relay to me. I'm no expert, but maybe some of you folks out there in the no land. So these are the three wires coming off of the uh, shutoff switch there. And then we got two wires inside there. Oh, and here's our exit wires to our switch. So here's a gray, three gray wires going out. So I'll give you a little closer look here. All right, so here's are my three black wires power feed in here's three wires out and I would assume that all the rest of this is starters I'm not sure I got a black that it might actually go to my power that might go to a light that I don't have alrighty new development so here is the two-speed switch for the motor and Lo and behold, there is a wiring diagram in there, if I can get it to stay. All right, so here's the wiring diagram that was under the two-speed on-off switch. And I'm going to go with this. So I luckily have Google Translate, so I can get a few words here and there. And so this up here says NETS, which means network, which I'm assuming is power in. Key factor there, one, two, three lines. So I'm gonna say that it should have a three phase in. So we're gonna go with that this guy is three phase. 
based off of that and based off of everything else I can see here, it does have another set of uh, single phase 110 volt wiring hooked into it, but I think that was for a light at one time or some other gadget or gizmo. And it does have an auto stop on this thing, I think, too, on the bottom of the, the slide, the table here, but or the box. Next step, what I think I'm going to do is wire this guy up for three phase, hook it up to my rotary, and see if the motor works. All right, well, we got <clears throat> three phase power hooked up to this guy, and I am going to turn the switch on, turn the phase converter on, and we're going to hope nothing blows up. So here's phase converter. Moment of truth. We're either going to have the 4th of July all over again or it's going to be pretty melodramatic and it'll just spin. So, moment of truth. Uh, here we go. Ah! <laughs> Look at them bearings, holy smokes, I shut it off. So I shut it off probably 20 seconds ago already. Maybe I'll, I don't know if I want to, I don't want to engage it. We'll try, I'm assuming this is going to be slow speed, so we'll try the slow speed. Oh, hey, look at that. So there's high speed, shut it off. And we got a double check rotation here, that our wiring. That was definitely high speed. So you could hear that. So that is currently turning counterclockwise, it looks like. So I'll turn it back on the slow speed here and hopefully we'll get the correct direction. And it's not, it's spinning the clockwise. But that is a slow speed, so hey, there we go. <laughs> Easy fix, I can switch two wires around in the rotation of the motor, figure out which side is the uh, the slow side. And I gotta figure out which way this guy's supposed to turn too. So hey, there we go, it's three phase, yay! Score one for uh, Brett here. Good job, give himself a pat on the back. And then I had another gentleman ask me in the comments on my last video about this uh, clapper box lifter. And this shoe was a little bit different than the one he had on his machine or he was used to seeing on a lot of the machines over in Europe. So this is it. Try to give a little closer picture of it here. I think it's basically the same setup except the shoe is actually a little bit different and I don't know if it's rubber or not. That was one of his questions. So what I'm gonna do now is just try and clean this guy up a little bit and we'll see, see if we can see what's under some of this grime here. So this is a shoe in here, so look at that. I can, I can sh see a little bit here. These are little dovetailed shoes in here, and they look like they may be rubber, which I want to say they are. Could possibly be turkite or something like that, but or even like a bakelite material. It's not rubber. So it's amazing what you find when you actually go through and uh, do a little cleaning. So what we have here is made in Western Germany. Klopp, 1953, and model 425. So it would explain why I wasn't finding a lot of matches on this thing because it's an actually, uh, because it's actually a model 425 and not a 450 like I thought it was. So that would make a little more sense. Some of the things don't didn't quite add up as far as a 450 went, but I didn't even know they made a 425, but here it sits.
All right, well, there we go. There's a little bit of progress on the clop metal shaper. We've got the wiring figured out. And actually, off camera, I switched uh, two leads on the wire or on the motor to actually get our direction running correctly in both speeds. So now, low speed and high speed both turn in the same direction. And I didn't know last time uh, when I was looking at the flywheel which direction to turn because they need to turn usually a certain direction. And so I search in and all over the place. Anyways, I saw another gentleman with a, a clop shaper on YouTube and lo and behold, on the bell housing cover there, there's an arrow that shows you which way it goes. So that eh, pretty much showed me which way it went. So the next thing I'm gonna do on this, I, I mean, I still got quite a bit of cleaning left to do on it on the outside. And then once I get the outside cleaned up, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna take this entire ram off of here. So I've been told that this thing shouldn't be running on grease, although these grease circs look kind of factory, but I can't say for sure. And you know, other guys with these machines say they don't run with grease, and I would think that they should run with oil. I don't know why they have grease in them, because they have oil slots and stuff in them too. So I gotta figure that out and see what's actually going on. But I believe getting this ram off is not too big of a deal. You take the back screw out, take this off, and that piece I believe folds down and then we can slide this out, loosen up the gibbs here. And, um, if nothing else, just to get all that, those ways cleaned up. As far as the table here, the box, I'm not sure if I'm going to take it off yet or not. I think I might just to, to get the screw out, get the box off. Well, the box comes off by itself and then the slide comes off and probably wouldn't be a bad idea to actually clean those out. The gears on the inside, I think they're not they're in good shape but they're dirty full of grease and again I'm not sure if they're supposed to have grease on them or not I'm not gonna tear this thing completely down and repaint it because I think that's at this point in time I just don't have time to do it as long as I can get this thing functioning running properly and working good that's all I need to do well we found out a few cool things about this machine today first off it is not a model 450 it is a model 425 built in 1953 in West Germany and also a serial number of 33385. Kind of cool, kind of fits in with all my US made 1950s machinery minus my two Colossings, but um, a lot of my other machines were from the 50s in that era. All right, if you haven't already, smash that like button, hit subscribe with notifications so you can see more of these awesome videos coming up where I get this thing actually running one of these days and cutting some things because I got some cool projects lined up for this thing. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you'd like to help support my channel, you can always check out Patreon and the links below. As always, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time.